Welcome to the Shelburne Development Review Board, Wednesday, February 9th, 2019. I'd like to call this meeting to order, and I'd like to first start out by opening it up to public comment. Anyone in the vast viewing public wish to offer comment? I see none, so we're going to move along. Um, <coughs> Let's go. Uh, next time I have on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the last session. You look fine to me, if, unless anyone has some suggestions. I'm fine moving to approve. I'll second that motion. All in favor to approve minutes from January 16th. Aye. 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 All right. That passes. All right. Time to talk about. I want to. Disclose or recuse conflicts of interest from any upcoming applications tonight. Well, I'm going to have to continue to recuse myself from the uh, Shelburne Green uh, uh, applications. Okay. I will do so also tonight. So does that give us critical mass for Shelburne Green? No. No. Okay. So that being said, I would make a motion to we can come to that later on if you want to do it now. Let's do it now. Clear up the agenda in case we got folks here. But I can't talk about it. That's right. You can't be here. Oh. Well, for, for dealing with the agenda, I'll just... Yeah, um, let's do it in order. Okay. All right. Um, all right, but let it be known that we're not at a critical mass right now for corn to talk about um, Shelburne Green. Okay. Next up, we well, have. I, have a, uh, oh, I am a friend and I actually a client of Clint West, so but I don't believe it'll affect my ability to be unbiased in making my decision. Very good, thank you. All right, anyone else? Okay. Well, I, my same comments in le last week for St. Catherine of, Fien of Siena, and I don't think anybody had any issue with me sitting on that one after last time. So. Okay. Very good. All right. Comments from the audience? All right. Very good. All right. Moving on. Application CU 1704R1, SP 1702R1, DR 18-19. This is a continuation of the application by St. Catherine Siena Parish for design review con conditional use site plan approval to expand the existing church properties at 92 Church Street and Village Center District, Core Village Core Overlay District, Village Design Review District, and Stormwater Overlay District. Um, I know we talked about this in the last DRB review session. Is there any comments from anyone in the board that would like to add since, the, since coming from the last session? None, none for me. Any from staff? None. All right. Any from the public? I didn't know if you wanted me to do a brief overview or let it go. We're, we're good to go. Okay. All right. Um, do I have any motions from anybody? Um, I don't have a staff. I don't have a draft motion in front of me. I didn't bring the last. Yeah, I don't, have I don't think there's one in the package. Is there's there? Have staff comments. We don't have a problem with any Motion other. is 17. Yes. Got it. Thanks, sir. All right. We've got draft motions. All right. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to finalize the record and close the hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I have a motion to approve, direct staff to prepare a decision indicating approval. Um, Zoning permit is required prior to any land development. Uh, the applicant must provide report regarding historic nature of the parish hall building as identified. I've got for three. Sidewalk proposed along Falls Road must be built according to town public work specifications, and the applicant must provide a two year landscaping bond or irrevocable letter of credit for purpose landscaping as well as landscaping plan with their application for a zoning permit. Any other conditions that, and that's what we identified. Okay with all that? Yes. Excellent. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Aye. All right. You guys have it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Okay, moving on. Application BLA 19 1. This is a continuation also. Application. F oh. Yeah? It's a continuation. It's a continued. That's continued. You have to move to continue this to uh, March 20, okay. 2019 due to the noticing issue from the previous meeting. Um, this is a way to correct this. And at the previous meeting, this was continued to this meeting. Okay. So we're continuing this to March 20th. Got it. I see it now. Make okay. a motion to continue application BLA 19-01 um, to March 20th, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, continued. All right, next one, application SUB 16-02, which is a continuation application by Lamaray and Dickinson Consulting Engineers on behalf of Snyder Group, final plan proposed 91 unit residential plan unit development property at 5760 Spear Street. In residential district, stormwater overlay district, floodplain and watercourse district. All right. Um, do we Chair, have? Uh, the applicant has requested this to be continued to the February 20th DRE meeting. Continued February 20th. All right. I'll make a motion then to continue application SUB 1602 to February 20th, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Okay. I'm going to. Jump out of the way. Do I need to jump out of the room? We're not doing it. What do you want to do here? What's the procedural call on this? Procedural call is to jump out of the room, but for the, in this case, because there is no quorum, this will, these two items will both automatically be continued to the February 20, 2019 meeting. So there's no reason to jump out since there's nothing to vote on? Yes. Right. We're not voting. We're not discussed. <laughs> it's a push. Yep. Okay. Vice Chair. Just make a motion to continue that. That sounds like we don't need no, to do that. We don't even need to do that. Because right. we can't vote. Right. It right. automatically right. goes to the next right. meeting. There isn't a quorum without us. So Def can't. Defaults that's to the next well. meeting. All right. There we have it. And that's nine. That's uh, eight and nine. Eight and nine. Okay. Moving on to ten. Wow. Application SUB00-7R2 which is a continuation application by Bob Clark to amend a condition of approval for previous approved subdivision. Property is located at 4947 Spear Street, is located in the Rural District, Stormwater Overlay District, Floodplain and Watercourse Overlay District. All right. Hi. All right. Just, can I just say one thing? Um, if anybody's here, please sign in because our recording secretary is not here and identify yourself clearly So, because she's going to be doing the minutes off the tape. Sure. So I'm AJ LaRosa, uh, counsel for Fisher Brothers Farm and Becky and Bob Clark, the applicants. And this is Becky Castle. Um, it's Bob Clark and Becky Castle. All right. Um, so. Let me swear you in, and then what I want to do procedurally, I'll turn it over to Robbie, let him get first um, first shot at explaining the big picture, and then we'll give it to you. So, Great. raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Excellent. I do. Robbie. So, this is an application to amend a previous, uh, from a condition of approval from a previously approved final plan. Uh, that condition of approval from final plan approval set SUB 007 states lot one, which is the applicant's lot, shall be conveyed with a restriction that the lot shall not be further subdivided. Lot one shall be developed only for residential and normal accessory use and or accepted agricultural practices as defined by 10 VSA section 1021 F and section uh, 1239 F and 6 VSA 4810 and may be amended and any rules and regulations promulgated, promulgated under such laws. Uh, so with this uh, condition of approval at the time, the intent uh, was to have it have the lot, lot one, as a single large lot um, and to use for uh, large animals such as horses. And this is from a quote on page three of your staff report. Um, a, a similar amendment uh, application was put forth 
in late 2014 with the DRB denying such request on the two points uh, on page three that the, that the applicant's uh, request didn't pass Snow Club Highlands doctrine. Now, coming before you, they do have a, um, they have to report a, a position that shows that they do pass Snow Club Highlands doctrine. Um, from staff's point of view, we find their, um, their position valid. Um, however, after consultation internally, that a regulatory change would be, uh, uh, an example of that would be a zoning change or a district change. Um, so in order, to ha in order to balance the intent of the, uh, uh, of, of the condition of approval, of the approval uh, along with the district, uh, and with the regular regulatory changes that have occurred, um, s having some sort of condition uh, in the end that would restrict a lot only for single family use and agricultural uses uh, would be ideal. All right, where's the law located? I don't have any. Right. Just give us a refresh. <clears throat> Lots located at 4947 Spear Street. Um, you can look at my. Uh, yeah. It's north of Quinnyosca. So it's that large red barn as you go down the hill from Quinnyosca toward Burlington. The staff report? No. It was from uh, the previous DRB meeting. Okay. All right. See if I can get it. Okay. This is coming back. He's coming back to me now slowly. Okay. <laughs> me too. Briefly, what, what changed to make them meet the um, Stowe uh, Highlands uh, standard? I think I can defer to the applicant at this point. Sure. Okay. So, um, first of all, thank you for making it out tonight on an otherwise treacherous evening. So, um, I'm on Burlington's DRB, and I know sometimes how frustrating that can be uh, to reschedule. So we're glad you're here tonight. Uh, the long story short is in 2000, as Ravi said, there was a subdivision that was approved. And the goal uh, at the time was to keep lot one, that's this current lot, in a large scale format so as to promote you know, agricultural and residential uses, but to not create, it's almost 70 plus acres, it's 70, 75 acres. 75 acres, so the goal was to not have it subdivided into a tract housing of multiple lots. And so that's why you have that uh, condition of the approval. Since 2000, however, there have been a number of uh, regulatory changes that make it very difficult, next to impossible, uh, effectively impossible, to have a single family home and a successful farm operation on the same lot. In 2008, uh, a number of, because of the crash, a number of banking and finance laws changed, a number of insurance laws changed. In essence, the result of that is you can't get uh, reasonable financing, you can't get traditional mortgage lending or mortgage financing to build a single family home on a lot with a operating business. This is a, as you, this is a, the farm where Sisters of Anarchy ice cream is made. They grow berries, uh, they sell those berries. They're doing quite well selling those berries, which is great, but they wanna live on the farm. And the problem is you can't get homeowner's insurance, you can't get traditional um, uh, lending sources to build a home the way you would on your lot or, or, or Doug might on his lot. You would need, that's considered a mixed use development at that point. And that's basically out of reach of any reasonable person to finance. It becomes very difficult to, to finance and construct. Insurance is another issue. Business insurance covers certain risks and certain, certain things, and homeowner's insurance covers certain risks and certain things. They don't overlap. So if I have business insurance and a home on that lot, that home is at risk by the business. So if something were to happen, someone were to get sick from the ice cream, there's a risk that the home would be um, taken in, in any settlement or something like that. The other way flips as well. If they have homeowner's insurance and someone gets sick from the ice cream, the homeowner's insurance isn't covering that. And so really the only you know, way for them to live on the farm 
and have a farm business is to draw basically an imaginary line around a home parcel and let them live on the farm. Also, Act 143, which got passed in 2018, uh, supports farm-based business, but it requires registration and ultimately site plan review. And that's just another layer of permitting that makes it a mixed-use development. So now I have site plan review for a business that also has a home on it. It, it doesn't really work. The only way to do it is to draw a box. Um, and I'll get to an element that Ravi brought up as well. Basically, draw a box. I think our proposal is six acres. It's more than the minimum five acres. Uh, put a home on there and create that boundary creates the liability protection and uh, removes some of the burdens and walls placed up in the last 19 years since that, that was created. Um, there's a comment in the staff report about reviewing this through in sketch plan. Ravi and I have talked. We originally came in with sketch plan. Ravi and I talked and thought maybe this might be the most efficient way to go. Uh, we're fine doing it any way you guys want. Um, as to Ravi's suggestion about uh, limiting it to uh, single-family residents and agriculture, we're 100 percent behind that. The goal is not to create more density on this lot. The lot as it is could have a single-family residence, a farm re worker residence structure, and an accessory dwelling. We're very comfortable limiting the overall density to that. We just want the opportunity to have a single-family residence on a separate piece of land. I remember this was in many years ago. It was the same sort of request. Um, it was denied then. All right, I'd like to open it up to the board. Any comments, thoughts? Clearly, the uh, uh, <clears throat> Stowe Highlands uh, regulatory change that changes the, uh, the ability to uh, achieve the original purpose of the uh, arrangement uh, is grounds for uh, getting into the balancing act. So I don't have a technical problem with it. And I think. Council's done a good job of, of um, making a persuasive case. Did you guys submit a letter to the town stating why the conditions have changed? Because what I have is I have, we have a staff report, um, which is... Um, yes, so, Chair, this yeah. letter was originally part of your packets for the January 16th meeting, I think. There's an argument, there's a um, letter that outlines yeah. the arguments. Yeah. Okay. I obviously can provide more copies. Yeah, okay. and All right, we can so that, provide copies as so well. We can, yeah, so we can reference that. Yeah, I can I can bring you a copy right now if you'd like. Um, that's okay. We, okay. Don't, we don't need to do that. So what I was after is just making sure we have something from the applicant that that substantiates their position why there's a change. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. Um, is there a particular place on the land that it's going to be? Yeah, in? absolutely. And again, that I'm so, sorry that there may have been a confusion with the packets. This was originally on the January 29th. Is that the right date? January 20th schedule? 16th? 16th. Yes. Sure. And um, in that application, there was a, a site plan, C2-01. I have a copy of it. I can give. Ravi might go get it. I'm, you don't mind if I just I get side of it. It's up in the back parcel of the land. Um, that's upland. It's not really, okay. it's not really farmable land, and so it preserves the max agricultural potential. Any uh, further questions from the board? No, Any further comments from the applicant? None right now. Any Thank questions you. from the public? Comments from the public? Okay. Um, are there any motions? You've got one here. Do we don't want to. Does guys see any reason to continue? I'm, I'm kind of feeling like we can finalize the record and close the hearing. So you have a variety of uh, yeah. options that are enumerated in the final page of the packet. Um, motion to continue until a sketch plan is received. Motion to continue in itself. Um, motion to close. Motion to approve with certain conditions. Motion to deny under certain grounds. Um, uh, staff advises that all conditions should be read closely and chosen wisely. Okay. Um. Unfortunately, I don't have last uh, last uh, 
packet from the last session, one of the things I would be concerned about is, okay, Stowe Highlands criteria, if that's met, the board could decide, okay, we, there's new reason to um, say that a division of the lot is good, and do we have that, is it an actual plot or proposal that shows exactly kind yeah. of the area you want to, that's what I want to make sure we yep. can see. There it is. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, take it. Do you want to take it into a closed session? Yeah, I, th I think so, just to close to make sure yeah. we're all good. But I'm, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm feeling comfortable that we can close the hearing on this. Any thoughts from the board? I agree. All right. Well, so I make a motion to finalize the record and close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And we'll go back and we'll deliberate and come out with a written decision. Great. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Drive safe. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the confusion on my part. Hey, don't worry about it. All right. Item number 11, application FBZ 17-01R1. Application by Clint West for final plan review of to merge two adjacent parcels. Property is located at 2916 Shelburne Road, is located in the mixed use district and the stormwater overlay district. All right. So we're on a final plan review of this. All right, Ravi, can you refresh our memories? So Here, Mark. This Thanks. is very similar to what you might have seen uh, during the January 2nd, uh, 2019 DRB meeting for sketch plan review. Um, this is to merge two pre-existing small lots. Uh, lot one currently is uh, 0.263 acres. Lot two is 0.194 acres combined. The lot would be around 0.457 acres, 19,990 square feet. Um, this was previously approved uh, back in 2018, at, um, May 16, 2018. Uh, this is being redone as uh, the applicant did not file a mylar within 180 days of approval. So <clears throat> it's treated as though it never happened in our right. lives. Um, and therefore, it's the reason why the applicant is seeking this. Um, this actually reduces non-conformity, right? Yes. Yep. All right. This is, yeah, this is just a re refile, basically. Yep. Okay. Uh, anyone here from the public to speak to this? Uh, my application. All right. You want to, if you wish to offer any testimony, we'll swear you in. If you don't, we'll... Um, We'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, Good unless needed. All right. <laughs> Note to self, don't remember to file your plan. Check. <laughs> You're not the first one. No, this has happened before. <laughs> all right. I'd like to make a motion to finalize the record and close the hearing, as well as a motion to authorize staff to prepare a decision indicating approval of final flat application, FBZ 17-01. What are the conditions? Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Mylar must be recorded within 180 days. Oh, sorry. Zoning permit is required for prior any land development. Okay. Um, this seems like upon completion of work. Have you had a chance to read all of these as an applicant? Yes. Do you have any concerns? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Great. So I'll make a motion. conditions attached to the earlier approval. Yeah? Yes. Right. So I make a motion to authorize as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Nice to have it. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Application SUB 18-02. Application by Lamore and Dickinson Consulting Engineers on behalf of Sterling Land Company LLC for final plan review for a proposed three-lot subdivision. Property is located at 82 Mount Philo Road, is located in the residential district and stormwater overlay district. Okay, Ravi, refresh our memories, please. So this is a proposal for a three-lot subdivision at 82 Mount Philo Road. Uh, this was heard, uh, the sketch plan was heard um, August 1st, 2018, and also September 5th of 2018. Uh, the DRB also conducted a site visit on August 15th or August 13th of 2018. Um, in, their, in the previous approval, the board recommended that a, that 
the applicant shall prepare a redesign of their proposed subdivision to only show two lots, one that directly fronts Mount Philo Road and the other west of this lot, instead of three lots as shown in their sketch plan application. However, the, uh, the applicant has not uh, heeded this request. Uh, however, staff finds that this proposed three-lot subdivision is in conformance with the town zoning bylaws and town subdivision re regulations uh, in effect. Um, with this, uh, staff does not have many things to note about their application from a zoning perspective and um, based on having consulted with uh, other town staff um, we are comfortable with the application as presented at this point I'll defer to the applicant okay is anyone here to speak about this application Gentlemen, come on up in. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Excellent. All right. Update us, please. <clears throat> Andy Rowe from Monroe and Dickinson and Bart Frisbee from Sterling Construction, Sterling Land Company. Uh, this is at 82 Mount Philo Road, um, Bacon Drive on the opposite side of the street. Uh, a relatively large lot, an a little over an acre and a half. Uh, currently, there's a single family house in the front, uh, a paved drive. There is an old uh, gravel driveway that leads around to the back, but again, this was just a single family house. The prior owner had converted a portion of the back to be accessible due to his mobility issues. Um, so while it kind of has the look of a two unit uh, dwelling, it is only one single family dwelling. Um, with this proposal, that gravel drive would be abandoned. The existing paved drive remains in place for the single family house, which would remain on lot one. And the proposal is to create two single family lots on the back half of the property. Um, a new driveway would provide access to the two new lots um, adjacent to the Muzzy property, uh, would split. Um, some of the comments we had from both fire and rescue was to provide an adequate uh, radius here so that a vehicle could come in and make that um, sort of a three point turnaround. Um, we did talk with uh, both the DRB at the last uh, hearing and with the fire department about the width and have come to an agreement with them. What's shown was acceptable to the, uh, to the fire department. Um, municipal water and sewer services would be extended along the driveway. Um, we've also shown a number of mature trees on the back portion of the property that would be saved. Um, if you remember from the site visit, there was a uh, three-stemmed uh, silver maple over here. The intent is to save that in the front yard. And then, as you can see, there's a number of other uh, mature trees around the perimeter that, uh, that will be intended to be saved. Um, what's shown here, obviously, is uh, just for zoning purposes, uh, the actual house footprint and the uh, exact position on the lot might vary along with the grading. Um, but certainly the driveway uh, in the general location of the houses are as presented on this plan. Um, in addition, we've got, uh, it shows on the uh, utility and grading plan, but we've got a swale that comes along the low side of the driveway here that would intercept runoff coming from the two new lots, comes down along the new driveway and comes into a little infiltration area here that would manage the runoff from the two new lots before it ended up in the ditch along uh, Mount Philo Road. Um, one item that I think Revy hit on in the staff report was there was some disagreement among staff on exactly how the existing open ditch along Mount Philo Road should be handled. Um, Paul Goodrich had the opinion that that should be closed and add a catch basin or two and pipe it. Uh, Chris Robinson was in favor of leaving it as an open ditch in order to get some uh, treatment and a little bit of retention time in that grass swale and that is what shows on the plans. Um, so I guess the only suggestion we'd have is I think the plans that are in front of you are what uh, both Paul and Chris have looked at um, and I believe that's what Chris has approved. Um, that swale does get moved back a little bit further outside the right-of-way. If you look at the grading on sheet two, there's a fairly steep shoulder there or minimal shoulder and a fairly steep drop down into that uh, roadside ditch that's there now by moving it a little bit further outside the right of way and regrading it we can get a little shoulder and a little bit more uh, of a gradual slope down into the swale it will still be an open um, you know mowable roadside swale along Mount Vila Road. That was my concern Eddie, the fact that <clears throat> that was quite steep through there and 
um, pretty tight to the show edge of the road, so your intent's to move it back. Yeah, to move the bottom of that out away from the road a little bit so that it's, you know, over time Mount Philo Road, I'm sure, has widened a little bit and there might be a desire to add a little bit more of a, a shoulder there over time as well that moving that swale out further away from the edge of the road, um, there's plenty of room in the right of way. It doesn't encroach upon anything. Um, so that was what we're trying to accomplish there. To add to the point of the applicant as well, uh, planning and zoning staff con uh, concurs with Chris Robinson's assessment and uh, his recommendation of constructing this whale as presented. Any further questions from the board? The way this is designed, do like you have adequate treatment area? Yes. Both ways, with and without this? Just. Uh, we're not relying upon the grass whale along Mount Viola Road either way, so it's not part of your treatment no. plan. No. Okay. Nope. So we would have gone whichever way. We kind of left it to town staff to work out and let the dust settle, and this is where it ended up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any questions from the public? Comments from the public? Yes, sir. Come on up. Sure. Introduce yourself, I'll swear you in. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Mike Hannigan, I live at 20 Bacon Drive. All right, do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Excellent. Um, I, I, I come here more to raise issues, I don't, I'm not, I'm an English major, I'm not an engineer, so forgive me, but, uh, so we live here. Mike. Thank you. We live right here. Uh, downhill from the property in question, we have a lot of water issues on our property already, and uh, we're naturally concerned that this driveway that's being proposed here is like a water cannon named at our house. Um, that is all downhill running towards us. I understand there's some some proposals made to, to mitigate runoff, but um, I'm concerned that it, it would be inadequate to, to decrease the amount of water coming into your, our yard and not increase it. Also, to note, like where the driveway is now, hits a curb at the corner of Bacon Drive. There's curbing there. Here, there's nothing. This flows directly into our yard. Um, so it's a concern of ours that wa water running off from this development, two significant driveways, uh, and that whole drive aimed at our house would cause a negative impact. the applicant of time to address that concern. Um, so as I mentioned before, we've got the, um, oops, the swale coming down the edge of the driveway, which I, goes into an infiltration. Trying to understand how the swale impacts water traveling down the driveway. So the driveway will be super elevated. It'll be tipped toward the existing house. So it'll be tipped to the north because the Muzzies had expressed a concern about water coming down the side yard and running down their driveway now. So we don't want to be... Why don't you flip it over to the uh, sheet two? Do you have that? Because it shows the grading plan a little better. This one? Yep. Thank you. So you can see the, the contours address that issue. Right, so the contours show that the driveway will be tipped to the north toward the existing house. The water is going to sheet off into this swale. And the purpose of that swale is so that we don't get water coming off the lots in the back, running straight due east across the lot in the front, the, the yard around the existing house to remain, and just end up in the ditch along Mount Philo Road. So this will intercept the runoff coming from the higher rear portion of the lot, convey it down into this infiltration area where it'll have a chance to uh, infiltrate. That will overflow into the ditch along Mount Philo Road. So between the ditch that we've got the grass swale ditch running along the driveway and the existing ditch that runs along Mount Philo Road and the fact that Mount Philo Road itself is crowned, Water on the west side of Mount Philo Road will be contained to the west side of Mount Philo Road, as opposed to I'm, jumping across and flowing to the I'm east. Struggling a little bit with that. All right, I, I can understand you, you've got the driveway angled slightly, so that you're trying, you're attempting to channel the water, and actually that will it'll divert 
some of the water, but it's still a straight angle down. It's, it's like when it gets closer to Mount Philo, there's no flat part where that angle could really direct it in there. You're continuing in, to in terms of the driveway or the, 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 the driveway, swale. Here. The driveway. You're right. The first 15, 20 feet of the driveway. Well, the first 10 feet of the driveway is going to come out to the edge of Mount Vila Road right. and run along the edge of the shoulder and down into the, the Mount Vila Road ditch. The lowest portion of this driveway won't make it into that infiltration area because this point on the driveway is lower than, than the infiltration area. I see. 217, where's the, what's uh, the edge of Mount Philo Road at? I'm trying to read the oh, contour. Up the street is 215. 215, there's not a lot of contours on that. Mm. It, it, it doesn't. Okay. So when it, I'm, I'm sure this would address like a calm rain, but anything substantial, the crown of Mount Philo Road has no effect for the water coming down the hill. Now you can stand in our yard and see it coming, pouring down. And we're at a, I don't know the exact measurement, but I would say the lowest point of our yard is four or five feet below the surface of Mount Philo Road. Sure. So I, I just look at this and I see water starting here is just going to go straight into our yard. Well, I think, I think you need to take into consideration that Correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, but water typically moves moves perpendicular to the contour lines you see on the plans. Is that correct. is that a fair statement? That's correct. So I, you know, if you visualize all this water coming down, it, it's going to the majority of this water uphill there is going to end up in that ditch before it. Before it can get down to Mount Philo Road, that's the whole op. That's the whole idea of this grading plan. I understand that, but he just acknowledged that the bottom 15 or so feet is past the ditch itself. That that in and of itself is a substantial increase in the amount of water coming into our yard. The 15 feet. Okay. Well, I mean, Andy, is there a way you can take and you're going to put a paved apron there, and then it's going to be gravel the rest of the way? Is that the plan? Or? Correct. So the paved apron will also slope to the north. So anything on that paved apron will come down and hit the edge of the, the Mount Philo Road pavement and go into the ditch to the north. Um, you know, we, we heard the, the concern from the Muzzies, and I haven't observed it, um, but I know that they had said that they have water that comes down the, the generally down the pro common property line and runs down their driveway. And with the proposed driveway and the way things will be graded on the lots, at least the runoff from this property won't be contributing to that problem now. I'm not sure whether that's part of Mr. Hagen's uh, issue, but at least with the grading proposed here and the grading of the driveway, anything from this property won't be contributing to the runoff on, on the Muzzy driveway. Instead, will be conveyed to the north into either the Mount Philo Road ditch or the infiltration area on the front of Lot 1. So is it safe to say, based on the existing contours versus the proposed contours, that you're going to be intercepting the water from lots two and three and a small portion of lot one and redirecting it around and into the stormwater facility. Correct. Is that a safe? Yes. Is that, is that your objective here? Correct. Okay. But the, the, the ditch now along Mount Philo Road, um, you know, the existing pipe, the existing pipe ends about here, I believe. It, it runs quite a distance along the front of the yard. But there is an existing uh, swale that runs back here to the Muzzy driveway. So any water that's coming down across Lot 1 in the, the undeveloped portion in the back right now gets intercepted in that swale along Mount Phila Road, except what is able to get into the Muzzy driveway, run down their driveway, and hit Mount Phila Road. All right. So, so you're a practicing engineer. In your professional opinion, is there anything that could be done on, I'll say, like the, from Mount Philo Road in, say, 15, 20 feet to slow the flow of water down so that, that that slope that you have on the driveway could further channel that in when we get a high rain event? So with the paved apron, we can accentuate a little dip there. Mount Philo Road is 
at least at that area, should have a little bit of crown into it. We can carry that through the paved apron. So as you come down the driveway, there will be a little bit of a dip as you come off of Mount Phyla Road before you start to head up the driveway. Right. It, and that, because it's going to be paved, is something that's going to remain. It's not an area that, such as a gravel okay. surface, it's going to need regular maintenance or fill in if there is washing. Having that dip in the paved apron will be a more positive measure to, to get that water into the swale along Mount Phyla Road and not have it end up going onto Mount Phyla Road. Right. I think with a little careful grading there, they can, you can really pretty much put all of the water into the stormwater treatment on the west side of Mount Philo Road. Yeah. Correct. I think just with some careful grading. I mean, yeah. this, the, it, so, Into the, either the infiltration area or the, the swale along Mount Philo Road yeah, for sure. Or, you know, you can send it back to the invert over on the up on the south side of the driveway too, right? I mean, and then send it back under the driveway. Yeah, if although you, if we're we're trying to get a little dipped paved in there, it would be easier to keep the. What about if you crowned? What about crown if you the crowned crown the paved apron? So, I don't think you want to crown it. You want it with tip to the north to to go in that. Swale. Okay. Which is matching okay. the slope of Mount Philo Road sloping so, hey, generally to the north. We're engineering a solution here, and I don't think we want to do that. So, yeah. as a, let me let me just. But check I guess as the applicant, we can offer to show, you know, a dip in that paved apron in order to ensure that the water coming down the driveway doesn't end up on Mount Philo Road and does right. end up in the and the ditch. Is, would it be reasonable to maybe elevate that first 10 feet beyond that dip so that slows the water down and gives that angle? Again, engineering, an engineering solution. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a valid concern that was raised up by the homeowner across the street. And can you guys come back with something that addresses that on the plans? I think what we're Yes, okay. we're going to add a little dip to the paved apron to ensure that any runoff that's coming down the driveway is shed to the north and not onto Mount Vila Road. Okay, what I'm trying to get to is wondering if we can finalize this tonight or we, we can, have to wait. We can condition this. I think it's easy to condition this. Just to be clear, um, what, what would be the language of that condition? So. What I'm concerned about is, is making sure that the water flow in a large rain event or snow melting event is properly channeled um, into the water retention system so it doesn't go on Mount Philo Road and cross Mount Philo Road or impact any other adjacent homeowners. Yes, sir. I have a question and one other thing I'd like to raise. The question is, what, what level of storm is this S solution designed for? Is it designed for question. an everyday event or a 25 year storm? I know there's different terms out there. Yeah. And I then the, the only other thing I would add is that in reviewing the notes from previous meetings, I'm sorry I haven't been able to make it before today, I know every other neighbor has addressed stormwater concerns as a significant. It's very valid. So Absolutely. That's all. Thank all you. Right. So, Andy, how would you address what type of storm event? 25 year storm, and that's included in the stormwater narrative that was submitted with the application and reviewed by the town and city of South Burlington. Okay. Okay. All right. So, any other comments from, uh, from the public? So what I'm hearing is that uh, the approval will be um, predicated on the applicant uh, modifying the uh, uh, grade is shown to ensure that in a 25-year storm uh, there won't be water uh, from the drive uh, crossing Mount Philo Road. Correct. Correct. Uh, it seems to me that's the highest level. Leave the details up to the engineer um, kind of approach to the, the standard we're looking for. And, and then I think it's kind of up to the applicant to decide whether or not um, you'd rather live with that um, high-level performance standard or whether you'd feel more comfortable coming back to us and showing us a specific proposal instead. And as to that, we, we, my inclination would be to defer to you. 
I think we have a clear understanding. We, we are fine with that condition. We have a clear understanding of what we need to do and, and what the solution is. Okay. May I ask one more question? So assuming all this goes forward and there's the stipulation that has to meet a 25-year performance standard, we all leave here after this uh, is approved or is approved at some later date. What recourse is there if that fails? So we would um, we would have the engineer sign off as built to print as specified, so it will get implemented as required. Mm -hmm. If there's a 50-year storm event, we're all going to be struggling. No, I understand that. Okay, um, so that that's how we would um, execute it. So to validate. hypothetically, there's a 25-year storm event mm -hmm. and it fails. What and my backyard is floating, my basement is floating. Yeah. What recourse do I, I have? I, I can't advise you. I, we can but isn't that your job? We're, we're, we're trying to protect you, but I can't advise you on what your course of action could be if there was an event that or something failed. Currently, currently if something would happen that showed that the standard wasn't met, we could, we could require changes to meet the standard. Mm -hmm. But that's not completely answering your question which is what can you do about the money you have to spend to pump out your basement? Not so much me as the town. You've, you've said, this is what it must meet. It doesn't meet it. So is there anything beyond you didn't do a very good job, or is there some recourse? So we set the guidelines to the professional engineer. This is what professional engineers Certainly. do. And if they don't do their job, I, I, that, that would be a recourse that a homeowner would have to figure out. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Ken Albert, just a I'm up question. To Thank you, sir. Swear. swear I, do you swear to help tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Thank you. Just a question. With all the interesting weather events we've been having <clears throat> lately, how many 25-year storms have we had over the last five years? And is know. that still a, a relevant measure to use, or should it be something else? It's just a question. I, I don't know the answer to. The it is. I believe it is according to the state, Ken. I mean, that's what you have to design to. Am I correct in saying that? Actually, the 25-year standard is a town standard. And, and what, it, what is a 25-year standard? Have there been storms over the last five years more than once of that magnitude? I haven't been keeping track. Okay. How do they measure? A, a 25-year, so a, when we talk about a one-year storm or a 10-year storm or a 25-year storm, is a design storm. And a 25-year design storm is four inches of precipitation over a 24-hour period, and it's a nice curve. And admittedly, we don't have a lot of, you know, nature doesn't always behave in a nice, smooth mathematical uh, equation. Um, the data that uh, comprises the four inches um, of runoff in a 24-hour period is the data that we use for the precipitation amounts is NOAA data. Um, the state requires that instead of using, uh, they didn't change significantly, but you now go to a NOAA website, pick your exact location. So you know the precipitation amounts that you get for Shelburne is going to be different from what you're looking at in Stowe. Um, it is an ongoing updated database. Obviously, a few years of data doesn't significantly change something that's based upon a 25-year look back. Thank you. Questions, comments from the board, from the public? All right. Uh, Andy, do you, do you think with a reasonable amount of certainty <clears throat> you can design and execute this plan such that you would not see any increased or excessive amount, any increase in water or any water leaving the site going across to the eastern side of Mount Philo Road? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I want to ask one more question. In your opinion, based on the fact that well, I'm looking at the existing conditions plan, and I'm looking at the proposed conditions plan. And in your opinion, given the existing and the proposed contours on lots, especially given lots two and lots three, are you going to be intercepting a lot of the water that would typically run across lot one and sending it into your stormwater treatment facility? Yes. Okay. In fact, the, the ditch the culvert that runs across the front of 
lot one will actually be shortened. That, that entire culvert will be removed. The new culvert that goes in will actually be shortened, increasing the length of the ditch that's there to intercept water. How big is it? Uh, it's a... It's a 12 inch now on the inlet end and a 18 on the outlet end, I believe, and we're replacing it with an 18, the full, full length. It's, 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 it's at least two different it's pipe a sizes. Culvert, but we're replacing it. Okay. I think that's, given what I know, I think that would probably greatly improve the situation. Have you ever seen, can I ask you a question, Certainly. sir? Have you? Microphone, please. Yes. Have you ever seen that ditch fill up during a rain event where the water is overtopping Mount Philo Road? Not that I recall. Okay. Thank you. So it's all going to get better with the river pipe. That's that's my my opinion. The for what it's worth, department. Yes. All right. Okay. Are we good? Any other comments? Board, public. All right. Um, as a board, are we comfortable finalizing the record, closing the hearing? Yeah, with conditions. Um, we're going to. I'm just asking Robbie if there are any other suggested conditions for uh, this from a staff perspective. Um, other than what has been listed in the packets. Uh, not so if we I take the packet language and add the 25 year standard. Um, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're good. Yes, and that's, I think that that language is something that can be uh, perfected upon in deliberation as well. Right. But it, it would be a similar condition that I would, that our staff would recommend. Right. Okay. Okay, and for the record, all of these are identified as single-family homes, no duplexes. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. The lot sizes are not large enough to accommodate a duplex. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to finalize the record and close the hearing. And then I would like to deliberate upon this afterwards and have a written comment issued. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you much. Thank you. That is it. A short week. All right. Um, any other orders of business before we close the meeting? Drive safe on the way home. Thank you. Unbelievable out there. Very much. Don't chances. No. <laughs> Lee, you want to ride home? Did you walk? All right. Let me close the hearing. I like a motion to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.